So here's the odd thing, many of today's brand new crossovers look like they can go off-road, but they really can't. But that doesn't mean they're not fun. So without further ado, here are our top 4 fun non-off-road worthy crossovers that we've driven this year, and one that certainly is off-road worthy. Uh, give me a sec. Oh yeah, that's better. If you recall last time I drove the new Explorer, I was in Michigan. Ford had flown me out to the proving ground, plot up a field, and let me go wild in the Explorer. And you know, it was a field, but now, as you can hopefully tell, I'm in Colorado, and we're gonna see if this Explorer is Colorado off-road worthy. Let's go check it out. As most of you know, this new generation of Explorer is no longer built in the traditional way. That's body on frame. So the question is, is it as off-road worthy as a more traditional last generation Explorer? And that's what I'm here to find out. So far, so good. I'm impressed. But you know what, as I get higher up this trail, it gets deeper, it gets rockier, and it gets tougher. So let's see how this Explorer goes when this trail gets Colorado Rockies rough. officially stuck and this isn't all that hard. I've got the car in uh, rock and mud mode and yet I can't get up this hill. Yeah, I'm stuck. Well, that was unexpected. You know, I've taken the Land Rover 4 up this, and I've taken the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the new one up this, and all of them had no problems whatsoever, and yet, the Explorer got stuck. What more can I say? The, oh, I hit something there. The new Explorer is just too big, too heavy, too long, and yes, too civilized for serious off-road work. If you want a car that's good off-road in terms of snow and maybe a dirt road, Look at the Explorer, but if you want to go on, you know, some of the tougher, all right, maybe not so tougher Colorado stuff, you're probably better off to go with a more dedicated off-road car. So while modern electronics like those in this Explorer can help you off-road, they don't replace traditional off-road virtues like higher ground clearance, higher approach and departure angles, off-road worthy tires, and of course, lockable differentials. I'm sure you know that the Jeep Grand Cherokee is trail rated and can go off-road. The SRT8 version, not so much. But here's the real question, can this black Jeep behind me go on the track? Well, there's only one way to find out. Get on the throttle here past this cone. We've got a lot of front drive off the corner. The car pulls nice and hard off it. I don't have to worry about anything stepping out. Get on the brakes here, grab a downshift. The Jeep will just tear up this thing. It's got all wheel drive. Oh, you can feel that back in the road. Now you've got some massive brakes on this, right? Six piston, Brembo's. Yeah, we've got the biggest in the company. It's a 380 millimeter front. That's 15 inches for the Americans. And it is ginormous. Well, I got to tell you, this car, boy, it's really stable and fun. I mean, it's a, like I said, it's a grin machine. <laughs> I know. You can't see me, but I'm grinning behind this helmet. <laughs> Do you really need a 
Grand Cherokee that can do, you know, almost 170 miles an hour and gets, well, at the rate I've been driving it, about eight miles to the gallon. Obviously you don't, but that's the thing about these SRT8 products. They're aspirational, if not practical. That's why you want them. I love the wheels. How big are those? They're uh, huge. They're, Look at yeah, those things, man. They're 20 inch wheels, but yeah. they're, they're, they're forgings. All SRT wheels are forgings, which means they can be very strong and we can take the weight out. They're actually very light. I'm gonna get some grief from the, the purists because I've already had on the internet, we've had some discussions with our passionate SRT owners that really like the signature dual exhaust that used to be in the middle of the vehicle. Uh, but we were surprised by how many owners actually want to tow. You get this beautiful cover so it doesn't, you don't have this uh, ugly hitch to look at. So we integrate it as well as we can. And we have put a four inch uh, pipes on the vehicle that are actually finished in a cool black, in a really uh, black chrome versus a typical bright. So it's kind of a nice little detail that's unique to this generation of SRT8. feels a lot bigger than the Charger um, and admittedly this is a car that I never fully understood because I never thought that somebody would buy a Jeep to, to go quickly but I understand it now um, considering that it, it, it's, it's kind of its own breed of car. Um, it feels really really well planted and really really firm um, and when it's in this sport mode you know it feels Oh, it really feels as good as that Charger does. I mean, what Jeep has Pirellis and Brembos and that exhaust note? I know. Okay. Listen to that. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. All right, I have to admit, that was a hoot. Yeah, this is one badass Jeep. Would I want to take it off-road? No, I wouldn't. But on the track and Perhaps on the Autobahn, I couldn't think of a better off-road worthy vehicle to take. Are you looking to buy a new car? If you are, what's important to you? I'll tell you what's important to me, fun. I'm shocked that Nathan likes a fun car and you know, that's all fine and great, but I do like luxury, I can't help it. I like being a little bit pampered. Luxury and fun. Yeah, that's all well and good. But let's face it, sport is what it's all about. And this car is not only fun, it's also sporty. And I'm betting it'll go off-road, maybe. Hey, how you doing? What are you looking for when you're buying a new car? We've got sport, luxury, and my favorite, fun. As a matter of fact, this is mine. It's the new 2011 Mini Countryman. All four, which means it's all wheel drive. Well, unlike fun boy Nathan, I like a little style. I like a little luxury, but I also like my style and luxury with a pedigree. That's why I have the 2011 Volkswagen Touareg TDI. Yeah, fun and luxury, that's expensive. I've got sport and economy. I'm driving the 2011 Nissan Juke which is the cheapest car here and the sportiest car here, I'll wager. But here's what's cool about this car. It is all wheel drive. It's an option. And I'll tell you something, it's a worthy option to have. Why? Because in the end, when the apocalypse does come, Look. this car yeah. will be able to take you through the heavy snows, through the nuclear winter. Snow apocalypse. Snow apocalypse. <laughs> Nathan, 
It's snow apocalypse. Snow it's no apocalypse. Snowpocalypse. <laughs> Come on, say it. When snow apocalypse. Snow apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> and this car is great in snow. It's great on ice. It's great in rain. It is really built for that. And today we're going to be taking it off the beaten path and we'll see how well it does. So Nathan, uh, how much ground clearance does this uh, countryman have? Uh, a little over five inches. Five inches? Sarah, you thinking what I'm thinking? Big rock. What? Hey Sarah, how big is that rock would you say? About that big. So over five inches. More than five inches. Alright, let's see what Nathan does. Come on, Nathan! Big rock, let's see that countryman! Are you kidding? Come on! All right, no rock, no rock. Rally cars don't have to go over this. It's snow, ash. Are you giving up? I don't want to break it. I don't want to break it. He doesn't want to break it. That's not much fun. That's not much fun, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good on the street and snow and no big rocks. Oh yeah, baby. Juke. Sporty and capable off-road. Roman, where are we now? I believe uh, right here was where that five inch rock was that Nathan's uh, countryman could not cross. Is the fun killer! The fun, the killer. fun killer! Does that sound? Does that seem right, Nathan? <laughs> I, I was pacing myself. It really, yeah, that's right. <laughs> fun killer! It's not fun. It's <laughs> good on streets. All right, let's see how far this guy can go. I think it's gonna go a lot better because I have seven inches of ground clearance, unlike Nathan's five inches. Speaking of ground clearance, can you... <laughs> Speaking of ground clearance, can you go forward? Oh, 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 oh. I think, I think we're stuck. That's not good. No. <laughs> no, I think that's about as Definitely far as we want to take this. Definitely not good. I think no. we should stop. What you looking at, Roman? Oh, it's a scratch. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a juke. <laughs> I think that's a juke scratch. <laughs> I think seven inches only get you so yeah. far. <laughs> I think you need uh, something that's a little bit more off-road capable. I think so too. And luxurious. Hey Nathan, I think we're past where you got to, and I think this is where that rock is with the big scratch from the juke. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what do you say, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> things about you go. Oh, I have luxury. I have tons of control. What more could a girl want? Now you got I some big have. boulders coming up here, so is that worrying you? <laughs> We're at the top of the trail and as you can see, there's only one car here. Obviously, it's the Volkswagen Touareg, one of the best cars for this type of environment built. Uh, I still maintain that the Mini Cooper is the best car on the street. It's great, it's fantastic. The Countryman is the most fun you can have with that type of car. And the Juke? It's sporty, it's capable, it'll get you through a snowstorm, and it's half the price, actually less than half the price of this car. But this car will pamper you all the way to the bank. This is Roman Micah reporting for Nathan, Sarah, and of course myself for TFLcar.com. It's a Panzer, it can go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>